That's right, kids. It's once again time for Comics in Christ. And in today's episode, we celebrate the advent of the television title. This is the NWA World Television title. Now, in the past, I've done uh, some of these videos, and you've seen the NWA World Heavyweight title. One of, one of my hobbies is collecting the, the championship belts of all the people that I liked in my childhood. And there were so many dear people who held this television title. Wrestlers like Bobby Eaton and Nikita Koloff and Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. There's been many times that I've used the television title in, in reference with Tolly Blanchard to talk about what it means to have a perseverant spirit. And we'll move into that a little bit today. But today, as I, as I step out in a, in a chance and I realize that I may be jumping into an empty pool with some of y'all, and I apologize, but I want to use, as we look at the candle of joy, this imagery of something that brought me immense happiness as a child and, yeah, even as an adult, what this imagery provides as a tool of what it means to be willing to follow the shepherd staff at unique times and even at times be the representative of that shepherd staff so that we don't just find joy for ourselves. We find ways to take the presence of Jesus Christ's love in our life and connect it to the hope that Jesus Christ creates so that we can help others find places that they can just rest in the joy of God for a few moments. Where the NWA World Heavyweight Champion was a person that inspired people to buy tickets to go out to the stadiums and watch the live wrestling shows. It was a responsibility of individuals like Arn Anderson, Tolly Blanchard, Bobby Eaton, Sting, uh, Mike Rotundo, to be people who could inspire people to watch the television programs. The NWA World Television title was a title that was primarily defended on TV. And the individual that held this belt had the responsibility of doing things in such a way that it inspired people to watch either the 605 TBS World Championship Wrestling or one of the syndicated programs, Power Pro Wrestling or, or Worldwide Wrestling on the syndicated programs. The person that held this title the world television title, was an individual who had the responsibility week after week to draw people to watch the TV programs to either see if they were a villain like Tully Blanchard or Arn Anderson, to see if one of their heroes could come along and take this away from them, or if it was their hero like Sting or Dusty Rhodes being the person who defended this title and they wanted to see their hero win once again. It was either the hope and the joy of watching someone become victorious and def dethrone the villain champion, or it was that hope that that person once again could put the bad guy in their place and keep the title safe from evil and harm. But the individual, the NWA World Television Champion, had a responsibility. Where the world champion went to a place and had to inspire people to come out to the live shows maybe once at most every two and a half, maybe three months, this person had to step up weekly to inspire individuals to watch a television program every week. Either, either to watch the bad guy be dethroned or watch the hero win once again. But it was something that the individual that held this belt had to be the one to inspire people, individuals, weekly to watch the show. I want us to think about that 
for a moment. And I'm, I'm going to pull this out of the realm of television programs. But I hope that we have a joy in our lives that inspires us not just to do something that is intentional self-care or intentional care for other people, but I pray that we have something in our lives that inspires us every day to look at the shepherd's staff and to look for the shepherd's staff so that every day we can find a moment to just sit and rest in the presence of the joy of Jesus Christ. To sit and rest and be in the presence of the joy of grace. Because there's so much that we are weighed down by. You know, the, the hero that held this title immediately had a bullseye put on their back. And the hero that carried this title had to walk week after week with the burden of who the villain would be that would try to come and capture this prize from them. We walk daily with burdens. We walk daily with burdens, whether it be the burdens of grieving that we miss individuals so deeply, so deeply. And as I make that statement, I think about in 2021, how one of my favorite heroes, Bobby Eaton, who was a world television champion, passed away this year. We, we exist in places of grieving for individuals that we, we miss. We, we exist in these, in these journeys of responsibilities that sometimes that we try so passionately hard to not let down God, to not let down our family, that we forget the image of agape love that says there's nothing that we can do to let down God as long as we just try to remain focused on that love. We become so burdened with our responsibilities that we forget and we don't see the candle of hope that's glaring in our faces. There's been so many of my conversations lately that I've used the comparison of Advent for 2020 and comparing it to the Advent of 2021. And I've used how 2021, it's been easier to see the light of hope glaring in our faces where the light of hope was still glaring in 2020. We just couldn't see it in the moment. And it's that place when we realize that we can rest in the joy that's given to us through the actions of Jesus Christ, that that hope is there even though we can't see it. That hope is there even though we can't, can't see it. Sometimes we're too busy trying to beat our problems. Sometimes we're too busy trying to overcome our problems that we forget that Jesus Christ has already done the work. We just need to go on the journey with Christ and outlast our problems so that we can sit at the table beside still waters and just sit in the light of joy instead of exerting too much energy and too much time in the battle. That's another imagery that exists within this NWA World Television title. And it was displayed a lot when Tolly Blanchard was, uh, was the World Television Champion. Now, Tolly Blanchard was the villain champion. And he was the person that we wanted to see, Sting or Barry Windham or or Bobby Eaton or Ricky Morton come along and beat Tolly Blanchard for this TV title. But there was a philosophy that Tolly Blanchard shared in his interviews that I want us to hold on into our regular lives because the NWA title where that an individual like Harley Race or Ric Flair or Dusty Rhodes, when they had a world title match, they had to fight for an hour Tolly Blanchard only had to fight for 10 minutes 
And there's this thing in professional wrestling, unlike boxing. In boxing, you've got judges and scorecards. And if the re- if boxing goes 15 rounds, the judges make the decision of who wins. But in professional wrestling, if you go the time limit, it's a draw and there's no winner. And there is a thing called the champion's prerogative, the champion's advantage. And the champion's advantage said if a champion walks into the ring and the time limit runs out, that guy leaves with that title. So when Tully Blanchard was the NWA television champion, he would, and being the villain, you got to remember he's the villain while I'm explaining to you this. He would mock and he would make fun and he would say, I don't have to beat you. You have to beat me. I don't have to conquer you. I just need to go out there and I need to last 10 minutes and I get to take the NWA title home with me. I don't have to beat you. That was Tully Blanchard's heel mocking interviews in his time frame as the NWA champion. And I'll I'll tell you, whoever the the matchmakers were for his matches, there's time that he was wrestling Ricky Morton, and they laid this out to the second that there was four seconds left. The referee, one, two, the bell would ring for the time limit draw, and then the referee would hit three, and everybody would erupt that they thought Ricky Morton won the title, but one second made the difference that Tully Blanchard still left with the television title. And it was never Tully's focus that he had to win. He just needed to outlast. Let me apply that in the conversation for you. Let me apply that narrative for you. And when we look at the candles of love, hope, and joy, there's something that dampens their lives. And it's, it becomes this necessity to, to get to the other side of a problem and just squash it like an ant. It becomes this necessity that we don't see love because we're trying to tackle the hurt. We don't see the hope because we're allowing the darkness of pain to have strength. And we definitely don't feel the joy because we're too busy trying to win a battle we don't have to win. We just need to outlast it. And when we outlast it, we get to the other side of the journey and we're sitting at the table beside still waters and we didn't win and we didn't lose. We made it to the other side and still were able to hold on to the blessing. I want us to hold on to that narrative. And I think about Tolly Blanchard so much. I'll, I'll share with you, Tolly Blanchard is currently a missionary who goes to prisons and shares the gospel of Jesus Christ with uh, different prisoners in different prisons throughout the country. It's another image that he's been able to hold on to because of the blessing of one thing that he had in his life. Because of one place at one time, he had this one image. He's able to take that image now and share it with people who would not listen to anyone else But they'll listen to a member of the four horsemen talk about what it means to find redemption through Jesus Christ. That guy who week after week mocked the Rock and Roll Express or Sting is the guy now that's sharing them the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And it's because that Tully Blanchard lasted the journey. He was a person that was willing to be the hands and feet to produce joy and excitement every week and for some of us every day and now he's using the light of even that journey to continue to shine it on places for individuals who are stuck in that journey who needs to see that there is true hope and restoration and renewal on the other side i want us to think about that I want us to think about what it means not just every week to be an individual that inspires joy for others, but to find ways to look for the shepherd's staff every day. 
so that we can be reminded every day that the light of hope is lit, the light of joy is lit, and the light <laughs> the light of love, the light of hope is lit, and the light of joy is lit. That even when we make mistakes, we can giggle about them and get to the other side and we don't have to beat the problems. We just need to trust in the grace of Jesus Christ and outlast them. And the way we outlast them is finding the places that we can sit in joy and happiness and peace and even use silly narratives from our childhood and, yeah, even my adulthood to proclaim joy and to proclaim the love and hope that produces joy, that can keep us going. Thank you for joining me today in this conversation. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis. God is joy. Amen. This has been a presentation of the DWO Podcasting.